Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Turning Down a Life. If you've lived a long time, and if you're old and stinky and worn out like me, and if you have spent a lot of time in the entertainment business, like me, or if you've spent time in any business, but especially show business, you know that opportunities are everywhere. But that the exact right opportunity for you only arrives once in a lifetime. If at all, and only if you are supremely lucky. Yes, these life-changing opportunities are something that, once put into action, refrain you from ever going back to your old life. This life-altering opportunity is such that it changes the DNA of who you are and who you used to be. Some of us are fortunate to have more than one of these life pops explosions of opportunity, while others around us have them, recognize them, and refuse to act on them. And yet there are others around us still, too hopeless and too sad. And they never have the opportunity to answer their one shot in life. And they miss out willingly by remaining in the dark. Unfortunately, many of us, the aware of us, are trained to stay in one place, to never venture beyond the backyard, to never dare safety against the dream of other realms or to have the want and the need to visit ethereal worlds that are out there, but that scare us. And now here are a couple of examples of what we're discussing today. And they both happen to be radio-related. And because these examples are so bright and so shiny, they cannot be denied or dismayed in their life-changing opportunities and because both of these examples were turned down in the end, and the resulting lives, the residual beings for both people, were never really the same again. And yes, they knew they were changed, not by luck or by providence, but by purpose and they turned down their lives. First, there was a young man with a golden radio voice who was working at a small radio station in the Midwest. He did a lot of local and national radio commercials, and he became known to powerful forces in New York City at ABC Television. And at that time, in the mid to late 80s, Ernie Anderson was the voice of ABC television. He did all the promos, all the voiceovers for all the TV shows on ABC. And my friend, we'll call him my first friend to keep this story alert and separate from the second telling of the life of my second friend. So this Midwestern fellow, my first friend, was offered the job of replacing Ernie Anderson at ABC. And New York offered him the opportunity to become the new voice of ABC television. Now that's pretty neat, right? Even if you aren't in showbiz, you know when New York calls, you go. You don't ever turn down New York or Los Angeles, or Chicago. Never. Now, Ernie Anderson is a voice you know. 
Even though you may not know, you know his voice and you do not recognize his name. Ernie was the voice of the love boat on ABC television. And his son, P.T. Anderson, Paul Thomas Anderson, is the famous movie director. Okay then, so, here's some great backstage audio from 1989, from Ernie Anderson's days at ABC Television. And you can hear him as he works hard to cut some promos for the network. I just want you to get the vibe of what the job was like by listening to this. Here's Ernie. Three, two, one. Tonight's all new. First, Angela's... This is here. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be so fast, it's going to be a Looney Tune. Mm -hmm. You can't set it up, even. You haven't got time to set up tonight's Three, all new. Two, one. Tonight's all new. First, is Angela really married? This is here. It's the hubby that wouldn't die. Who's the boss, then? Swear, Nancy! i just been partnered with Margaret Farquhar. The Wonder Years, then. Take this job. Girls, you'll never believe what he wanted me to do! Oh. Who the fuck wrote this? Let's find out who wrote this. Who the hell is me? Hey, this is a new one. McGuigan. McGuigan. McGuigan? 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 Uh, Bark or something. Right. Okay. From the top? Yeah, why not? We're not going to get this thing done anymore. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, one. Tonight's all new. First, is Angela really married? Yes, is here. It's the hubby that wouldn't die. Who's the boss, then? Swear, Nancy. I've just been partnered with Margaret Farquhar. The Wonder Years. Then take this job and shove Girls, it. Girls, you'll never believe it. One more time. I've been just been partnered with Farquhar. I can get that. <laughs> okay. God, this is terrible. Who's the boss, then? Swear, Nancy! I've just been partnered with Margaret Farquhar. The Wonder Years, then. Take this job and shove it. Girls, you'll never believe what he wanted me to do! Uncle Zay! Uh, and John Lutter's is rockin' the factory on half tape. And Love's in Bloom on 30-something. What a piece of shit. Let me look at it. It's terrible. Huh? Girls, you'll never believe what he wanted me to do! On Roseanne! Then John Ritter's rockin' the factory on Have Faith! And Love's in Bloom on 30-something. Uh, oh, what problem? Huh? Let me hear that. The John Ritter line. <laughs> What's the problem with it? He wanted me to do! Uh-huh. Rocking the rectory. Roseanne and John Lennon is rocking the factory on Hev Faith. Loves okay, and Bloom on 30. <laughs> Punch on Roseanne. Okay. Punch on Roseanne, punch. Because we got more time anyway, might as well take it. <laughs> well, they used to do that at the factory. A <laughs> hey, church factory. Run and shove it. Girls, you'll never believe what he wanted me to do. On Roseanne. Oh, is John Ritter's rocking the rectory on Have Faith. And Love's in Bloom on 30-something. What a nauseous fucking piece of shit. I love all that Ernie Anderson cursing. And radio guys have the filthiest mouths off air. Because they can't on air. Okay, so in that clip you could hear Ernie Anderson dealing with a lot of terrible promotional writing. And there are about four other engineers in the room with him as he tried to create his best work. But now remember, Ernie worked for about an hour. Did that for about an hour a day. Doing those promo recordings. And then the rest of the day was his. He was done. Gone. And in all that quick work, Ernie Anderson was the voice of ABC television. Will my first friend ever outlive the betrayal of himself?
no. And now, my friend, we travel on to a second example, and it's similar to the first, if not quite as extreme. And yes, we had another great radio voice, my second friend, and he probably sounded better than the first friend I just told you about. And someone from Texas was driving through our Midwestern city and listened to my second friend all night long. And this Texan was so impressed with my second friend's voice and his delivery and all of that, that the mystery driver from Texas called my second friend the next day at the radio station and offered him a job right there on the spot. And this new job was in Texas, only a few states away from where my second friend was already living. And the offer was my second friend would become the voice of a regional radio network that spanned the South. And the Texas money was big, bigger actually than what the ABC television offer was to my first friend. And yet the result was the same. My second friend's answer was no. Yes, my second friend said no to getting up and scraping out the rare compliment as his own. And he had no interest in the offer of a new life and a better life down south. My second friend preferred to stay in his misery where he was, stuck in the Midwest with a wife who was divorcing him, along with a young child who even today still doesn't recognize him, 30 years later. So what causes people to make decisions against their best interest? Are they just too scared to change their DNA by challenging who they are and what they know? So few of us are ever offered the chance to not just kill the golden goose, but to live the life of the golden goose. A life where your new life and fresh success are set out before you and pre-planned and completely prepared. If only you will sign on the dotted line, claiming your talent as your own, by knowing precisely why you were placed on this earth in the first place. You were not born to be stuck and stationary. You were born to fly and to migrate and to win the world with the talent that was pressed into you. Pressed into you only by the favor of the gods and by the desire of those who created you and birthed you into this universe. It isn't enough to recognize an opportunity in retrospect after it's passed you by. You have to be smart and sensitive enough on your own to realize an opportunity while it is unfolding before you and being quietly and delicately placed in your lap. Always leap. Forever jump. You will not be asked twice. There are no second chances. Live only in firsts, first opportunities, first to accept, first to rule, and then know, wholly know, you deserved to be asked in the first place. So jump and run into your better life tomorrow, today. Thank you for listening. 
be a human meme.